guys, welcome to a very special edition of TFL Talking Trucks, because this is a world debut of a very special pickup. General Motors is unveiling their brand new, first ever 2024 Chevy Silverado heavy duty ZR2 truck. And this is not just the ZR2, this is also the Bison, which is their top of the line off-road heavy duty truck. So it's a segment where you're combining heavy duty capability with off-road capability in one package. Uh, so this truck has some mud on it because it's been just in testing. Uh, and I have one of the guys on the team who created this truck and tested it. Is that correct, Tim? That is correct. Tim, hey, thanks, thanks for being here. You bet, anytime. So Tim, uh, please introduce yourself really quick. Uh, I'm Tim Demetrio, I'm engineering group manager for the integration group for all of the performance variants here at Chevrolet. Sweet, so you play with fun stuff like this. Yes. <laughs> a lot. This so awesome. we've, we've met each other at like different events, yep. you know, launching different performance variants of trucks. Yep. Um, so on this episode, I want to kind of go over this truck kind of element by element and see how does it differ from, you know, the base Silverado heavy duty that it's based on, really? Yep. So we're at the front. We'll start right up front here. Yeah. ZR2 unique grill. See the badging as well as the red accented bow tie. Yeah. Uh, the Bison, as you pointed out, gets front and rear steel bumpers. So the front one here is winch capable. That's why you see it uh, stick out. We got integrated recovery points, heavy duty here. Yep, and of course, so I want to point out some of the details. Yeah. So first of all, the base ZR2 truck will have a different bumper, right? Correct. It's a little bit uh, actually tucked. It's tucked uh, back a little. Towards, towards the grill. Yep. But I want to point out some details. So yes. you even integrated uh, the glow plug, right? The, the engine uh, block heater. Engine block heater yep. for the diesel. This is the Duramax. Correct. Um, and you're working, so we need to explain this, right? Yes. Because <laughs> you're working with AEV yes. on a lot of these components. Yes. And we're looking at this top of the line Bison trucks. So kind of just explain AEV and your kind of partnership with them. Yeah, so we have a great partnership with American Expedition Vehicles. They're a very big name in off-road. They make excellent products. So we paired up with them. It was a perfect match for our ZR2 platform. Uh, we bring them in, just take them to the next level of extreme off-road capability. And this is not new. You've been working with them for a while. Correct. We've been working with them since uh, the previous Colorado. Yeah. Bison was the first one. So, so, and of course, you know, the Silverado 1500 trucks yes. have a Bison edition as well. Yep. So it's your integration. I look at it like this. So I look at the ZR2 as, of course, the top dog off-road truck from you guys. Yep. But then additional protection, right? Yes from AV, is that fair to say? That is very fair to say, yep. Just well, because this is stamped steel. Correct. <laughs> yep. You can lean it against the rock. I don't know if you have tested that, but. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> uh, so that's really strong and also skid plates. Correct. Right? So let's save that for, for a bit. Let's talk about suspension, right? Yes. Let's take a wide view. Let's, can we step back just a second? Just a little bit, because this truck is sitting taller than a standard 4x4. Correct. It's about an inch and a half taller, 38 mils to be specific. Uh, lift over a standard HD 4x4. Yeah. Uh, so the ZR2, we get the, as the rest of our lineup, we get the Multimatic DSSV dampers, which are an awesome um, balance of on-road performance as well as off-road capability. You're sacrificing nothing. You get great on-road ride and handling. And then you can throw that big stuff at it off off road in the whoops in the desert, and it soaks it right up. Sweet. Um, and so both the front and the rear get a suspension lift, correct? Correct. Okay, yep. so it's not like it's, a leveling kit. It's where not you, a leveling kit. Where you're raising front the and rear. Yeah. And that's there's a big reason for this, right? Because this still is a heavy duty truck. It needs to work. Correct. So um, let's look at the rear really quick, because if you load it up, so the base. I was just reading the spec sheet. Yes. So the base ZR2 heavy duty Silverado has what, 3,397 pounds of payload. Just That's 30. with a gas engine. Correct. And of course, diesel, bison will get, you know, more equipment and less yep. payload, but still those are high numbers yes. for an off-road truck. Yes. Again, it was a no compromise. We wanted the truck to do everything you expected to do during the week and go out and have fun on the weekends out in the dirt. So here in the back, so how did you get the lift actually? Is it a new spring and leaf? There's actually a block under the... A block yep. underneath it. And then the there shock are... is mounted. You can kind of see it here. Yep. By the way, I got to ask you about this mud. <laughs> <laughs> so 
was this one of the test tracks? What was going on? Yeah, with this so one? we were uh, actually testing it. We used it for the photo shoot and had to do some testing in Milford. So had it dirty for you. So this is we Michigan like, mud. This is Michigan mud. Okay, it does look a little bit western, <laughs> like in Colorado or Utah yes. or California. It kind of looks similar. So maybe we're all the same. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's really cool. So. And then, of course, in the diesel, maximum towing is at 18,500. Correct. Um, and that's on the conventional hitch. Conventional. Um, you also rate it for fifth wheel and we gooseneck. We race it for fifth wheel and gooseneck. Yeah. Uh, your fifth wheel prep package is also an option on these trucks, just like any HD. So you can see uh, the two and a half inch receiver, right? Yep. And once again, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say we have our awesome camera connections that we have on all of our HDs, so you can get your camera views for invisible trailer as well as uh, inside the, the camper. And of course, seven pin connection for your, for your trailer. And I also wanted to kind of mention that the rear bumper, this is the AV Yes, so component. this is the AV with integrated, again, recovery points. And also, oh, I think these are like knockouts for yes. additional lights if you want to yeah, put so them. So AV will offer uh, additional lighting as they do along their other previous lineup of our vehicles. Very, very cool. And of course, you know, you're still getting your kind of multi-flex tailgate, multi -flex gate. cameras, you know, lights. Yep. You can see here, of course. But this is the ZR2 kind of. That's the Bison of. edition. You get the black patch. Oh, the Bison, yes. Yep. Very cool. And then you're improving up departure angles, obviously over the base 4x4. Yeah, the lift improves our departure angle. We're still, our departure angle is dictated by the trailer hitch. Of course, yeah, yep. it's still there. It has <laughs> still to be there. there. Yep. It has to be there. But at least here, yes. I can see, I mean, there's nothing here. It's just yep. a steel bumper. And then a steel corner bumper, yep. That's really sweet. And I wanted to point this out because this is, uh, you were able to package the 35. That is a 35 inch spare under the bed. So it's real, it's not a donut. It's a, it's a full size spare. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that, that's really, really cool. And you can kind of see how the shocks are integrating in this. Um, and of course the tires themselves. Let's talk about tires and wheels, because this is important, right? Yeah. Um, these are AV wheels, so it's a unique style. Right. Unique, but this is a 35. 35 inch tire. Uh, it's a 305 wide. Um, we have the, it, like you pointed out, the AV unique wheel. The ZR2 also gets its own unique wheel. Yeah. Um, again, 18 inch, same tire. Yeah, very, very cool. And. Um, I, I think this is, so did you consider other sizes? Because I think 35 is just, I would say it's good for the current market. Um, if you're going higher, I mean, people aftermarket can do that. Mm -hmm. What were some of your testing considerations? Because you have a lot of regulations you have to comply Correct. with. T tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so it's, um, at tire size is always trade-offs, right? Everybody wants larger tires, but with larger tires comes uh, larger turning radius because you're limited on how much you can turn the front axle. Yeah, you blow up more packaging of the vehicle as well as larger tires are heavier, more mass, worse Your fuel economy. Your efficiency goes down. Efficiency yeah. goes down, yep. yeah. So 35 is a great balance. We get awesome ground clearance. Uh, it fits the truck nicely and uh, we get a great balance performance on road and while towing and while doing all HD stuff you expect the truck to do. Cool, and I love the style. I've, obviously, um, the AV kind of, they, they always the valve kind of, stem protectors. Yeah, valve stem, so it's kind of hidden behind the kind of the face of the wheel, yes. uh, which is very, very important. Um, so, and you've tested, I've seen some prototype images out there. So you guys been bidding on this yes. truck for a while. Yeah, we've been out Moab, Glamis. We've taken the truck everywhere we take our full ZR2 lineup. So just because it's a large truck doesn't mean it's limited to where it can go. It'll do anything you expect out of a ZR2. Um, so that's really, really cool. So as you mentioned, of course, it's, um, it's joining that family, right? Yes. The Colorado ZR2, uh, the Silverado, Silverado 1500, and now this, this heavy duty, which is, um, I'm glad the family is <laughs> kind of together, right? Yes. yes. Uh, the biggest truck is here. So th is this unique to the ZR2? This that is not step? unique. Um, you can get any of our normal side steps. That's uh, just one of the side steps available for the truck. Okay, uh, so this which, is not like a weight carrying like rock slider. It is not a weight. It's not designed as a rock slider. I will okay. say it does. Uh, does it do a pretty carries decent some job. weight. Yes, it carries some weight, but it's yes. not like a true correct true rock slider. Is there going to be an option for a rock slider or? or? Uh, never say never. But right now okay. we don't have a, a rock slider uh, available for the truck. We have this is kind of our high clearance off road step. Uh, we also have the power articulating steps as well. Uh, that and that's going to be available on the ZR2. They're available. There. Sweet. So, I mean, 
Actually, I sometimes li like the power extendable uh, steps because, first of all, clearance, yep. right? They kind of hide away. Yes. Uh, of course, there are negatives and positives to both, right? Yes. In ice, you know, it might get stuck yeah. or snow, but it's just to your liking, right? Whatever you like, uh, it can be there. So, so we talked about kind of the suspension, so it has a little bit more lift. Uh, up to what 11.8 inches of ground Correct. clearance, Correct. so that's a pretty high number. Yeah. Uh, no matter which truck you're yes. talking about, <laughs> um, we talked about tires. We talked about shocks. Let's spend a little bit more time on shocks. Can Can you actually turn the, out the front sure. wheel so we can look at the A arms yeah. up front and actually the shocks themselves? This is really cool, guys. You You're not going to see this type of stuff anywhere. Uh, Chevrolet is being very uh, good to us thanks to you guys listening and watching um, and this is kind of an exclusive look at this truck i'm i'm super super happy so hopefully we can see a little bit more so let's talk a little bit about the front suspension design because it's a little bit different from the normal truck right correct so we had to do unique upper and lower control arms as well as a knuckle to optimize the geometry for the lift um, we wanted again all the things you expect out of an HD truck. We want great towability with full payloads. We want the truck to handle. So we adjusted all the geometry for the truck sitting an inch and a half higher. That's why those components are unique. Yeah, and I see, is that a bump stop? Can you, yes. can you kind of point to some things? So we actually have uh, two bump stops and like our heavy duty lineup, we have one bump stop here and another one on the rear leg of the lower control arm. Okay. Uh, DSSVs that are unique for heavy duty. Uh, so you can see the packaging up here is pretty tight. We've got a lot of stuff going on in a yeah. small spot. Yeah, you do. we got the half shaft in there. we got to get the damper behind it, uh, as well as the control arm packaging pretty tight around the... And you can see kind of the body of the shock yep. here. Um, a lot of people kind of uh, may not, even though I've been talking about it for years, <laughs> may not understand the uh, spool valve yeah. technology. Can you talk a little bit more about the shock. So the body of the shock, when we say body, it's basically the diameter of the piston and the Correct. body of it, right? Correct. Does that differ from the 1500 truck? No, so piston diameter is actually the same throughout our ZR2 lineup. That's it. All, really? all, all the way to the heavy duty is okay. the same piston diameter. Okay. However, we have different tunability. The DSSVs get us a great bandwidth of control that we can put into the damper. So the same piston that works on a Colorado works all the way up to a heavy duty that yeah, because like mass at 8,400 pounds. From my basic understanding, like I was expecting the piston to go up in size, but that not necessarily not, needs not, to be done. Correct, not with the DSSVs. It's all uh, internal valving changes and tuning we can do with the spool valves. Yeah, and the spool valve I've actually seen inside of one of these. Yes. It's like a spring-loaded yep. uh, valve, really, that lets fluid through it or not. Correct. Right? And there's multiple of, of them. Correct. Is that, is that position sensitive Position as well? sensitive, yep. Yeah. So we have uh, end stop control with these dampers, which allow us to give you the ride you expect on road, as well as having that control when you're off road in the big events, you get the control where you really need it at the ends. Yeah, that's very, very cool. And that's kind of unique to you guys. I mean, across your lineup, like you said, Colorado, Silverado, 1500, and now the heavy duty. Correct. Uh, we're, we're really happy with how the DSSVs perform in these ZR2s, they're just fantastic. It's truly a no compromise damper. Yeah, because, um, well, this truck is heavier. Can you <laughs> pop the hood really quick? Yes. I want to talk about powertrains a little bit more. Yeah. So this one has the big, um, here, the um, hood inlet, and there's the latest Duramax, right? So the ZR2 lineup of the heavy duties will have both engines available, Correct. right? Correct, both the 6.6 gas and the 6.6 Duramax. And the engines, did you tune them for more power for ZR2? We did not, unfortunately. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's plenty to go around in the in the standard powertrain, so that was an area we didn't feel we really needed to massage too much. Okay, well, there's always a trade-off to everything, right? I mean, if you had a unique tuning, let's say you boosted power, then you have to spend extra time, you know, extra time certifying extra. those engines Correct. and proving them out. <laughs> Correct, which all translate to extra cost to the customer. Yeah. So. so but this is the latest 6.6 Duramax. So you've recently, uh, by you, I mean GM, yep. um, boosted the horsepower and torque. So 470 horsepower, 975 pound-feet of torque, and still a 10 speed. Still a 10 speed, yep. But the 10 speed comes back with a gas engine too. Correct, we get 10 speed both gas and diesel. 
Sweet. And the, and the gas engine is rated at 401 horsepower, so and 464 pound-feet of torque. So you can get both. Obviously, if you want to tow more, how, what would you say? I mean, why would you put, pick each engine if you're buying a ZR2 specifically? Yeah, so the gas is uh, economical, what people are used to, what they're, they come to expect in a heavy-duty truck. The diesel kind of takes it up the next level. It's a more efficient engine. Um, it comes with cost, it comes with uh, what some people perceive as added complexity. It is a turbocharged engine, it's diesel, so you have the diesel emission system with it. Yeah. So there's kind of a balance of both worlds. So if you're shooting for performance, go for the diesel. If you want simplicity, the I, gas is there. Yeah, I kind of say this. So if you want to carry payloads, let's say in this case for this truck, for the ZR2, if you right. want to put a, a truck, truck camper, camper in the back, yep. I think we're in the same wavelength. Yes. Um, if you want to put a truck camper in the bed, Go for the gas engine, Correct. right? You get more payload. Yep. And you're not towing a heavy trailer, so you're fine. Correct. But if you want to tow, <laughs> and this is like we said, 18,500 is, is the tow rating. Oops, sorry. Um, if you want to tow, can you help me out yes, here? Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> um, if you want to tow, especially especially long distance, right? Correct. So let's say you're going on vacation, cross states, you're bringing a big camper with you or you're towing toys, right? Yes. As people would. Yep. Uh, then diesel is more efficient, right? Yep. I mean, you load up a gas engine and it loses efficiency in my perspective, in my experience. Yes. So, so uh, that's where the diesel really shines. And you've had the Duramax diesel for at least, what, a 23 years? <laughs> yes. 23 model years, so so obviously you have experience there as well. Oh, I see um, active grill shutters here too, yes. like the standard truck. Correct. Sweet. Oh, and I see, are these air inlets as well, or are these just design elements kind uh, of? Design elements. Um, again, there's a little bit of airflow that we get through here. Uh, it's also helps with airflow to the winch as well. When you have a winch here, you can still get airflow to the motor so, of the winch. So this plate will can come out. Yep, and put the, a fair lead winch. in there. Yeah. Yep, and you can have your access on top to the uh, clutch disconnect. Uh, I gotcha. So I wanted to talk some numbers. So the base ZR2 truck um, has what, 32-ish? 32 32 and a half. Yeah, uh, approach. approach. And this one is what? Just, Just under 30, it's 29.8. Okay. And that's because like we said, this yep. bumper is a little bit Correct, um, yeah. Longer. So you see, you know, with the diesel and Duramax, you have a giant intercooler, giant radiator in the front here. So you have to stack from that forward to get the winch in front of it. So the AEV bumper with the winch provisions comes out just a little bit further and takes away a little bit of approach angle. But Sweet. being steel, yep. don't need to be a shy uh, Stem scooching steel. up over stuff with it. Now let's talk a little bit about skid plates. Yes. So this is, I talked about protection, right? And yep. that's kind of what I mean. Um, so. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, there's a front plate right here. Correct. The standard four-wheel drives don't get that, right? Not a front steel one. Okay. Correct. And um, is there a difference between the ZR2 and the Bison skid packages? Yes. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so the, the Bison skid package, you get uh, a steel skid here that integrates with the front bumper, uh -huh. uh, as well as a steering gear skid. And then there's a transfer case skid a little bit further back. Uh, you. But and then the fuel tank as well? No fuel uh, tanks get on the heavy duties. Oh, okay. How come? Uh, just looking at the size of the truck, the, uh, the amount of steel you need to protect the, the skid plate back there and actually legitimately hold the weight of the truck, you get into a pretty big skid plate. So you're adding a lot of weight. You're adding then. a lot of weight and taking and that all comes right from your payload. So that was yeah. one of the trade-offs that we thought was a acceptable one to make for the customer. And then if it wasn't the Bison, what would the skid package look like? So we still have a front a steering gear skid and a transfer case skid. They're okay. different for the ZR2. Um, just a little bit different Just a little bit different design. material thickness. Okay. Uh, these ones are designed by AEV for the Bison package. So if this was a standard Silverado Heavy Duty 2500 4x4, to go to the ZR2, are you, how much weight approximately are you adding to go to the ZR2. So 4x4 four four to ZR2, I'd say 100, 150 pounds at most. We're talking a couple skid plates. Uh, the difference in weight of the dampers and the difference in weight of the tires. Okay, so not a lot of so weight. So not a lot adding. of weight going but to the then, ZR2. But then when you're adding steel bumpers, how much more are you adding yeah, there? Yeah, so ZR2 to Bison, we're talking about a 300 pound 
difference stepping up from the ZR2 to a Bison. And that's slightly heavier skid plates and then bumpers it, there correct. too. So you have to decide, obviously there's extra cost involved in there. Yep. Um, you haven't announced pricing yet. We haven't yet, yet. announced pricing Okay, yet. so there's extra, of course, cost, but also you have to decide, like, are you doing an expedition? Are you in the middle of Alaska? <laughs> Do you need to be protected? Yes. Or are you just playing in the, in the city, right? Yep. Or near a city? So you have to decide all those things. We give uh, the customers those choices. Sweet, sweet. I, I love that. Um, and of course, there's um, still a Z71. Correct. Is that still uh, in the, in the, in, at play? There's a Z71 still in the HD lineup. OK. And it just comes with some additional styling uh, differences, wheels and tires, wheels and right? Tires. There is some light underbody shielding. OK. Now, before we go inside, and inside, this is a new Silverado heavy duty interior. Correct. I want to talk about lockers. Yes. So let's go to the back. Yep. So if this was a standard 4x4, you would have a G80, G80. right? Yep. And we, we know G80, we love it. Yes. <laughs> but in my experience, like one wheel sometimes needs to make a couple of revolutions Correct. for that mechanical G80 locker to actually c come into effect. Correct. Now, what do you have here? So on uh, ZR2 and the ZR2 Bison, we have an electronic locker. So an e-locker differential, press of a button, you can lock both tires together. No wheel slip needed to engage them. Just uh, press the button so and there's... It, it's more predictable, really. So if you're right. looking at a big obstacle and you're like, yep. you know, I don't want to spin any tires, yep. I just I have to lock it, right? Yes. Um, what about front? So front, we did not put a locker in. Okay. Um, ZR2 and ZR2 Bison get a unique off-road mode. Uh, okay. In off-road mode, we opt optimize the stability control calibration. So especially on the front axle, we look for cross axle slip. We'll come in pretty hard on the brakes to transfer that torque across the axle to give you as much traction across the axle as we can, um, again, without having that front e-locker. So it's kind of uh, the system, you know, in the brain of the truck, kind of helping you out yes. there as well. Um, I know this is a pre-production truck, right? Yep. But can we, can we look at some of the yes. screens yeah. inside? Uh, now the diesel comes to life. <laughs> Sweet. So first of all, um, so I recently had a Sierra uh, Heavy Duty. Um, no, I'm sorry. It was a Silverado Heavy Duty, the new one. Yep. And I still like that. I'm kind of old fashioned. I like the column shift. Column shift. <laughs> still there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's pluses and minuses to everything, like we said, but... Um, it frees up plenty of space in your center console. Yeah. Sweet. So this is the latest interior, right? So. This interior on 24 models, at least, is um, in some of the upper trim level yep. trucks. What is it, like LTZ, High Country, um, and now, of course, ZR2 as Correct. well. So ZR2, you get the new colorway, you get uh, the green gray with the yellow accent. And then, of course, with the AEV edition, you get the AEV stitched in the headrest. Yeah, you can see that right here. So the, those little touches, right, that kind of come to so, and then, do you have a heads-up display as well? I do have a heads-up display. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see on camera, <laughs> especially over here. But, um, so show me some of the switches we talked about. So we talked about the locker switch. Yes. So we have a rear e-locker switch right there, nice and easy to get to. Uh, again, this is a heavy-duty truck with a Duramax diesel, so we have your exhaust brake here, everything you expect out of the, the heavy-duty truck. Uh, I like the trailer, trailer brake controller kind of on right the right. A lot, a lot of people are right-handed. Yep. So that's... that's uh, not to disappoint the left-handed people, <laughs> <laughs> but but it is what it is. Yes. And then you have a mode button uh, knob on the left. Can you Correct. go through some of the modes, or yeah. will it show the off-road mode? Yep. So we'll go to off-road mode here. Um, we don't have much of a... We have a little splash icon that'll change on the right, but you see the little mountain pop up here next to two-wheel drive uh -huh. indicating you're in off-road mode. Okay. And of course... So I want to talk about the transfer case. So you left the transfer case the same? Yes. As, as the other trucks? So we still have the, the four-wheel drive auto in our HD, as well as uh, four high and four low. Yeah, very, very cool. And all the, all the, all the gauges and all the cameras, too. Yes. Um, um, you guys do really well with cameras. <laughs> A lot of different views. Yeah, tons of views, as well as our trailering views. We have adaptive crews with trailering still available in the ZR2. Um, we know our customers use that a lot, and that's a great feature. So happy to introduce that to the to the new lineup here. So, so that's the whole thing, right? Uh, I mean, we talked about 
combining affordability with mm -hmm. a heavy duty truck. So you're not taking away from the heavy duty. Correct. If at all, I mean, it could be payload related, right? Yep. But you're not taking away a lot of capability, but you're adding off-road capability. Correct. Yeah, and you can see kind of all the stitching and little elements on the inside. Rear view camera mirror. Yeah, we're here in kind of a garage structure <laughs> um, over here. Sweet. Um, and there will be multiple colors, I'm assuming, yes. as far as ZR2 and exterior colors. Correct. Sweet. So, um, so have you towed trailers? W w tell me a little bit about your like testing r regimen for a truck. I mean, we throw everything at it you can think of as a customer. <laughs> we do uh, tons of towing out west. We we run Ike with you. Okay. Um, we do. Uh, as far as off-road goes, a little bit of what I touched on before. We've been to Glamis with these. We've been to Moab. We've been uh, Windrock Off-Road Park in Tennessee. Kind of a little bit every everywhere we can touch around the country and get a flavor of each sort of scenario you'd see the truck in. And you also, of course, you have have your proving ground. Yep, we have our proving ground. And grounds. all that stuff. Um, and, oh, yeah, out west, I mean, you have multiple. <laughs> yeah, so we have our proving ground in Michigan as well yeah. as our proving ground in Yuma, Arizona, where yeah. we have our specific... Uh, off-road Baja course, uh, Saguaro Trail. So this truck's run that. It's it's truly a no-compromise truck. We've done a little bit of everything with it. Um, let you do everything you expect. Okay, um, and I, I noticed that this is based on the 2500 series. Yes. How come not 3500 series so as well? 2500 uh, standard box is the most popular configuration of our heavy-duty truck. That's where we started. Um, say never, say never. We're always looking for more opportunities, but uh, we thought this was a great place to start Sure, so you kind of wanted to hit certain targets like payload and towing yep. and your most popular configuration. You wanted yes. to hit those. And uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, this is the first ever. I yep. mean, there has never been a heavy duty ZR2. There's never been a heavy duty ZR2. So I can't complain too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why would I complain? So, so that's, that's really, really cool. Well, thank you for uh, spending, you uh, spending your time. No, thank I you think for we coming hit up. most of the elements, right? I think we got everything off road yeah. mode, e locker, suspension, lift, bumper. There we have it, and tires, and tires, and tires too. But wait, there is more. <laughs> I found Dom here. How are you doing? Hey, dude, uh, good to see you. Yeah, so, here. can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, Dom Lester. I'm the uh, vehicle chief engineer for performance bearings and motorsports. So, for General Motors. So, yeah. you oversee basically not just trucks, right? Can yeah. you explain that a little yeah. bit? So, I oversee just trucks, but also our SUVs, um, our uh, Escalade V program, which was a big launch last year, yeah. Black Wings, uh, our CT54 and VU Cadillac yeah. Black Wings. So, all GM performance variants. Uh, so, but obviously the truck here is uh, the star of the show today. But, yeah, and so you're getting a, another member of the family of the ZR2 yeah, family, right? Another one that's the, graduated. The, big, yeah. the, the, the biggest brother, yeah, I that's guess. That's the big brother, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so uh, can you tell me a little bit about, so you're, um, you're also racing. Yeah, um, experience and integration. How do that works together? Yeah, so the neat thing about that, you know, my position here leading this team, uh, we're not only uh, you know developing and executing these um, performance variants, but we also had the opportunity to race these uh, 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 performance or production uh, motorsports. Uh, Chad Hall Racing is under my umbrella, so uh, it's really neat that when Chad is out racing. He calls me up on Monday and Tuesday and says, Does hey, he we, have your phone number? It does. It does. I mean, he texts me, <laughs> calls me, right? So it's really okay. neat to have that feedback. We also have team members that go to every single race that Chad races in. So we normally have uh, two engineers, uh, up to two engineers, and we have two of our technicians from our proving grounds that are embedded in the team. So that allow that technology transfer. You hear people use that term cliche, but in our case, it's a real McCoy because it's literally within my house, um, working on the production side of the house here on the uh, on the production program, but also being able to see that the racetrack and have that feedback loop uh, is priceless. I can't even really put a, a price tag on how much we learn. And Chad, when Chad calls, sorry, Mark, I got to talk to Chad. <laughs> so, I gotcha. Yeah. So so Chad Hall, so he, he has a team, he has several trucks yeah. on, on his yeah. uh, off-road team. And part of it, the uh, biggest part is Best in the Desert series, right? That is correct. And also, is Baja part of that? Or is it kind of yeah, in the so, same realm? Yeah, it's in the same realm. It's a different series, but we race in the Best in the Desert. We also race at the Mint 400 and the uh, Barstow race, as 
uh, put on by the Martelli brothers. But uh, okay. you know, but there's other racing series, Score and others. But uh, we co concentrate on the best in the desert and the uh, Mint 400. And so Chad's team has had the Colorado truck for a number of years. Yeah, since 2017, I believe, and we okay. started with the previous gen uh, uh, Colorado 31 XXN uh, vehicle. So he's been racing uh, every single race. We finished every single race we enter. I think it's now up to 39 consecutive races since. Uh, 2017, which is a, uh, a class record that we are really proud of because it, it, it's a testimonial to the, uh, the the durability and robustness of that truck. So it's, uh, it's an awesome, awesome vehicle. And then I remember this because the Silverado 1500 Zero Two wasn't in, in production, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. had kind of a test truck yeah, already yeah. racing, right? Yeah, exactly. We were out years before uh, testing things like uh, the DSSB dampers. We actually was racing that in the uh, Silverado uh, uh, truck at the time, and uh, some of the skid plates and other uh, things we were testing really out there on the track. Then, obviously, we launched the uh, ZR2 as a model year 22, but we were racing uh, uh, probably almost two years beforehand as a test bed. And again, it's a real great um, real world feedback loop that is uh, priceless. Uh, yeah, I remember I was like, is it going to come to production? And then finally it did, <laughs> there right? It is, yeah. Is this? Well, this is kind of a big truck. Yeah. Is this going to be racing, or is it going to be hauling the trailer <laughs> yeah. to the race? Yeah, well, it could definitely haul to the race, but stay tuned. We're always looking at opportunities, and uh, okay. um, and there's things that we learned uh, even on the uh, 1500 that we were able to bring over to the 2500 here. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're always looking at ways to continue to learn and uh, make a better product. Yeah, because uh, I guess some of the suspension uh, designs are similar, right? On the half ton yeah. versus the heavy yeah, duty. Yeah, very like. similar. I mean, this has a similar uh, damper. It's a 40 mil damper, uh, DSSV is by Multimatic, which is similar, uh, if you will, at least in the piston size compared to the 1500, but it's got a totally different uh, a valve code and, uh, and different. Obviously, it's got torsion bars and it's not a spring in the front. You know, so it's different, uh, you know, obviously uh, loads going into this. So it's a heavy truck, yeah. as you can imagine. But uh, uh, but there's things we learned, uh, and that's the neat thing. Uh, it's a, really a family, everywhere from the mid-size Colorado, Silverado, all the way up to the uh, 25, the 1500, 2500 series. So there's things that we can say we learned on, you know, the uh, the full-size truck versus mid-size, and vice versa, right? So uh, it's really, uh, you know, this is our, I like to say, our recipe for uh, off-road that we are able to grow that uh, portfolio. And here you are with the uh, 2500. Yeah, so in the production racing series, the powertrains are production, right? Yeah, so, bone stock. Yep. And, but, but there's certain safety things like roll cages and fuel cells, right, that differ because of racing, right? Yeah, exactly, right. There's certain things by rules, uh, yeah. by the homologation rules for the class, for safety reasons, uh, you know, uh, roll cage, as you mentioned, fire suppression, uh, fuel cells, and those things had, uh, you know, different content that we had to make sure that it's integrated into the vehicle so that uh, uh, not only it stays safe, but also uh, uh, make sure that added content is durable, if you will. So, awesome. Uh, but besides that, yeah, this truck, you know, we race in the uh, off-road racing, something really unique, it's, probably, it's over 90% stock. Uh, with the exception of the things that you just pointed out yeah. from a safety and regulatory perspective. But uh, hence the lesson learned or so the tech transfer is easy because you don't have to talk about what's different, right? Oh, the, yeah. The, the, Was know, the power level different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our case, we know, yeah, you got to take the roll cage out, yeah, you got to take out the fire suppression, but anything else that he's seeing on track, we can go right back to the uh, production team, which again, it's all in the same house, it's all in my org and be able to say, uh, it's easy for me to say, fix that, right? <laughs> because, you know, it's the real world, right? Sweet, I want to uh, end on this note, because accessories, right, yes. and performance parts. Yeah. So, uh, I remember uh, seeing the Colorado ZR2, uh, you know, we have steel drive shafts, yeah. we have bomb stops, yeah. hydraulic bomb stops. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk to me about some of the performance accessories, too? Yeah, so that's another group that reports out to me is the performance uh, accessory or performance parts. So as you mentioned, some of those things like the different lift kits or a steel prop. And so th for the things that we don't sell retail, we still allow a customer to go out and personalize their vehicle for things, again, that we learn on track, right? So we're still trying to figure out how to bring those things, whether it's through a production RPO or a production play, or if it's through an accessory play. So those are uh, 
you know, another opportunity. And again, it's all feeding up, uh, you know, some of those things, uh, you know, like a DSSB damper, for instance, they actually do make their way into a production truck, right? So uh, they started out as an accessory play. Yeah, and things like you know skid plates. Yeah. If you if you bought a truck that may not have had a certain skid plate, you can add that later, right? right? So right. that's kind of the, the so, thing. So we call that a flow down, right? We're able to flow it down to customers that may want that added uh, value to their vehicle, but they don't want the full uh, package for whatever reason, right? But but to, from our perspective, that still went for the customer, right? We're able to take something that developed for a ZR2, and if you have a lower trim vehicle, you can roll that down. And it's a win for the customers, win for us. So. All right, well, thank you for yep, your time, thank dude. Thank you. Appreciate right, it. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, guys, I, I hope you're enjoying this very exclusive look. Um, I think it's really refreshing that General Motors and Chevrolet actually uh, allowed me access to this truck, especially uh, with all the mud. And I, I think it just makes it look, you know, that it is actually a real thing. And, of course, I'm not driving it right now. Uh, that, come will come, that time will come uh, pretty soon. But I wanted to mention a little bit about competition, right? So what does the uh, Silverado heavy duty truck compete against? Um, so for many, many years, decades, the Ram Power Wagon has been one of the kings of heavy duty pickup truck, off-road trucks. And of course it exists now. So the Ram um, Power Wagon is also in the 2500 series, three quarter ton, uh, classification of truck and it has its own merits uh, the Ram has a solid front axle of course solid rear axle as well it has dual lockers front and rear but uh, one of our complaints has always been the power wagon has smallish tires I think it's rolling on about a 33 inch tall tire then more recently just several years ago Ford introduced their Super Duty Tremor package and they kind of once again, they, they may not have went all the way kind of the, for the power wagon, um, ultimate kind of dual locked, dual lockers truck, but it became very popular. And why? I think it's because it's combining, once again, capability off-road with heavy duty truck towing and hauling and actually giving you a lot of that uh, baked in uh, goodness. Um, and the Super Duty is rolling on 35s as well and Super Duty now offers a winch as well. And now General Motors has a solution for this, like we talked about with the front bumper, uh, the winch capable bumper, so you can always add that and integrate that into the truck. Um, so you're getting not just a suspension lift and better tires, but also, of course, the rear locker and the winch. So as you can see, competition makes everything, I think, all trucks better and also gives us more choice and then also recently, just within the last few months, Ram introduced a heavy duty Rebel truck. Uh, they based the Rebel heavy duty truck also on the 2500 series. Uh, but in my opinion, um, I guess they have both offerings, the Power Wagon and the Rebel now. And the Rebel heavy duty truck uh, didn't go maybe enough, in my opinion, in the off-road, um, just credentials and capability. Capability is there, but the tire, once again, is a little bit small, in my opinion, on the Rebel heavy duty truck. Uh, but this appears to be just kind of a kind of well-rounded package. You know, it's not insane. It's not rolling on 37s. Uh, but I think just from my first impression, uh, a truck like this uh, is, is a really great entry. Of course, pricing. Uh, is a big question, you know, how much is it going to cost? Um, if you load up all the way with a Duramax engine, uh, a lot of capability from the diesel. If you get the ZR2 and then you get the Bison package on top of it, uh, this is going to be a quite a pricey truck. Uh, right now, some of the ZR2 uh, packages uh, can run between six and seven or $7,500. If we're talking about midsize or I mean, half-ton trucks like the Silverado 1500. So, uh, yeah, so that price, of course, is going to be there, but you got to decide, do you want a truck that will do everything? Um, and if you do, uh, this is a great option. <laughs>